And what I'll be teaching today is something called cross-site scripting. So on the left, you have a website that users can typically interact with, and what they will do is to head over into the website, for example, like hackerlog.com. They're able to place things like comments, any forms of user input. They can chat with their friends or chat with Mr. Hackerloy. And in that case, what happens is your best friend forever, Mr. Hackerloy, will be able to likewise inject different types of code into the site. So in this case, what I'll be demonstrating to you you for today's tutorial is going to be something cross-site scripting attack. And this is the part where we're injecting things like script so that we're able to launch our attack. So with our own code, we are able to say, for example, redirect the user to a fake login page. We're able to steal their cookie or session information so that we can use their session data and view those personal data or information or sensitive data that is only relevant or specific to the user's session. Or we can be able to launch all sorts of any other forms of attacks like monitoring the user, getting the IP addresses, and so on. And before we go any further, remember kids, hacking is illegal. If you want to hack, remember to ask your mom for permission first. So what we have here is a JavaScript that we can insert into the input field. And what it does for us is that it's going to redirect the user who loads over into the page into youtube.com slash C Loy Liang Yang. You can see right here, I am pasting the script over and all I got to do is go ahead and click on to send. And you can see right here, we have been automatically redirected over in the site. Of course, the site crashed along the way with it. So what we can see now is if I head over to my other computer, so this is a target computer running on Windows. All I got to do is hit enter on this, and you can see automatic redirection over into youtube.com slash C Loy Liang Yang. So again, this is something we, we can be able to do through a redirection attempt. Now remember there are two users. One is Mr. Hacker Loy that you can see here running on Kali Linux, which is an ethical hacking operating system. And the other user who is running on Windows computer right here, which is Mr. Script Kitty Loy that we're targeting. So if you go to the top right corner and you go ahead and click under F12 Developer Tools, and you can see right here under Debugger, under Session Storage, we have a specific PHP session ID that is used to identify the user. And our job right now is to go and steal this so that we can impersonate a script Kitty Loy. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start up my server that is going to be listening. So we will listen and see what kind of information that we can gather. So all I got to do is enter, for example, python3-m http.server 4444. So we're now listening and all I have to do is provide a specific malicious payload. In this case, we have the payload example over here. I am going to enter and paste it right here. So you can see that we have document.location and we're sending over to the IP address of Kali Linux, which is 192.168.0.105 and a port of 4444 followed by steel.php and the cookie. In this case, we have document.cookie that we'll be using. So with this information, I can hit back over into the site or into the messenger. And all I gotta do is paste it right here and I go ahead and click on to send, okay? So now if I hit over to the following under here, okay, we can see the following, although we do get an error, but what we see is that there are two. So whoever loads over into the site, you can see the following. We have the following of 192.168.0.229. So this is from the target IP address and we have stolen the information. So the cookie is script Kitty Loy and a profile as well as the PHP session ID. So what we will do now is go ahead and copy and paste this one over into our session. So I have launched a new browser and this browser is on a private browsing session. So I go to the top right corner, I can click under more tools and from more tools, I can click under web developer tools. So over here, I can click under the following of storage and you can see that we have the storage information, okay? So what I'm gonna do is to navigate over into the chat page, hit enter on that. So I'll give my name fake hacker Loy. all right? And I'll go ahead and select maybe any profile photo that I want, it doesn't matter. So I select onto it. So we have a fake hacker Loy right now, it'll be created. 
So what I can do now is I can expand on the cookies. I can select onto the IP address of the site or the messenger app. So what I can do is to replace the PHP session ID as well as the name and see what we get. So I hit back over into the listener and I have the following, which is script kitty loy. All right, so this is the one that we're going to copy. I hit back over into the private session. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this. And then the PHP session ID. So in this case, we have the PHP session ID of the following. I'm going to do right click, copy onto the selection, go back over here, paste it over. Okay, and finally we have profile. So in this case, we have the profile of the script Kitty Loy. So let me go ahead and copy this as well. So copy the selection, go back over into the browser and replace it. So once we're ready, all we got to do is just do a refresh and you watch carefully. Right now we have fake hacker Loy. I do a refresh and there we are. We now are script Kitty Loy. We have stolen the session information of Mr. Script Kitty Loy. We can also create a fake login page that can harvest the credential of Script Kitty Loy. So what I can do here is I can open up Terminal, and from Terminal I can use a tool called Social Engineering Toolkit to help us create the fake login page. So I entered following of sudo se2kit, I hit enter on that, I enter my password of password, and then now we're loading, and all I gotta do is select onto Social Engineering Attacks, I select onto Website Attack Vectors, and I select on the number three, which is Credential Harvester Attack Method. And now we can use some templates that's out of the box. I can select onto that. And this is the post back, which is 192.168.0.105. And in this case, I can select onto number two, which is Google, which is a well-known like Gmail login that many users use it. And this makes it a lot easier and more believable when we're trying to harvest usernames and passwords. So now that we've set it up, if I hit back over into a browser and enter the following of 192.168.0.105, and this is the fake login page that we have created. And all we need to do right now is to redirect the user, any users who logs in over into the messaging app to be redirected to this site to take their credentials. So in this case, for example, I have the earlier example. So instead of going over into YouTube, what I'll do now is go ahead and enter the following of 192.168.0.105, all right? And once we have this, all I gotta do is copy this you right click, copy, go back over into the messaging app, paste it over here, and click over onto send. And with that, we'll redirect any users who reach this page. And you can see the automatic redirection when we head back over to the Windows target computer. So if I go over into the chat once again, I hit enter on that, it automatically redirects us back into the fake Gmail login page. And of course, if I enter a script, kittyloy at hackerloy.com, and I enter the password, and I go ahead and click on the sign in, you can see right here, if I go back to Color Linux, we go back to terminal, I can see the email is script kittyloy and hackerloy.com, and the password is Mr. Hackerloy. Is very handsome. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that, hey, Mr. Hackaloy, that seems pretty straightforward. So what I want to do for you is to go over to the next level. So if you go into this directory called USR share word list the blue fuzz injections, you can enter LS to list all the directories as well as files within the directory you're working on. You can enter head xss.txt and you can see some variants, examples of cross-site scripting attacks or payloads that you can inject directly onto the site and see which one gives you a hit. You can also enter tail xss.txt to see what many other examples that we have here. To, for example, you can see that we have document cookie script, location, we are able to get the document location cookie stealer and so on. So all these are example payloads that we try them out as we hit the site and see which one gives us a good load. With great power comes great responsibility. And what I really want you to do is smash the like button and turn on notification for the subscription to this channel. See you next time.